Next tonight, the leader of Latin America's biggest and richest country visits the White House. Margaret Warner has the story. A country once best known by Americans for postcard perfect beaches and a passion for the game of soccer, Brazil has emerged as a powerhouse competitor in the global economy, achieving the number six world GDP ranking this year. Along with Russia, India, and China, it's part of the so-called BRIC club of rapidly developing economies. Now this country of 200 million, Latin America's largest, is demanding to be taken more seriously on the world political stage as well. And today, President Dilma Rousseff was given a cordial welcome by President Obama at the White House. I uh, feel very fortunate to have uh, such a capable uh, and uh, far-sighted partner uh, as uh, President uh, Rousseff. Sobretudo, the U.S.-Brazil bilateral relations are, for Brazil, a very important relationship, not only from a bilateral, but also from a multilateral perspective. But though the hemisphere's two biggest democracies should be natural allies, they often don't see eye to eye. It certainly be hard to say uh, the U.S. and Brazil are adversaries or in conflict, but the fact is they disagree more than they agree. Peter Hakim is senior fellow and president emeritus at the Inter-American Dialogue in Washington. Americans and Brazilians love to talk about a strategic relationship. Yet the U.S. rarely consults with Brazil on the important global issues. That shouldn't be surprising given Brazil's history of being a thorn in the U.S. side. In 2010, then-President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva tried to broker a deal with Turkey on Iran's nuclear program and derail Secretary of State Clinton's push for U.N. sanctions against Tehran. Brazil has staked out positions contrary to Washington's on Cuba, climate change, and the 2009 coup in Honduras as well. Brazil is, in many respects, still learning what it means to be a global power. And the way it's, it's been successful, ironically, is not by joining with the United States, which would have been one route, but rather in opposition to the United States. That it sort of has gained its international prestige precisely by showing its independence of the United States. When Dilma Rousseff won Brazil's 2010 presidential election campaign, Washington had high hopes she would be easier to work with than her one-time boss and mentor, Lula. The former Marxist guerrilla turned technocrat has been less assertive and flamboyant on the global stage noted Eurasia Group analyst João Augusto de Castro Neves. President Dilma's foreign policy uh, is a little bit less uh, rhetorical or ideological than President Lula's, her predecessor, was. Uh, uh, so I think that, in the sense, that more risk-averse diplomacy, that more uh, conservative, in some sense, diplomacy is good for, for not only relations with Brazil and the United States, but actually for Brazil's goals abroad. President Obama made a point of visiting Brazil just two months after Rousseff took office. But it wasn't long before Rousseff was renewing Brazil's call for greater global recognition. She used her first appearance at the UN General Assembly last fall to declare that Brazil and other emerging powers like India should have permanent seats on the Security Council. It is not possible, Mr. President, to delay this anymore. The world needs a Security Council that reflects the contemporary reality we're living in, a council that includes new permanent and non-permanent members. President Obama endorsed another BRIC country, India's, bid for a seat in 2010, but has not done the same for Brazil. And that's galling to Brazilians. What Brazil expects from the U.S. today, I think, is a treatment similar that the U.S. has with China and India, with other big large rising countries. And, and Brazil thinks that it has, holds many credentials uh, to be in that seat, to have that permanent seat. And it's quite puzzling in Brazil to uh, try to understand why hasn't this endorsement come. Peter Hakim said it reflects Washington's general lack of attention to all of Latin America. Brazil is in a region that's not a central uh, priority of the administration of the United States. It's not an, a region that uh, has any urgency. Now Latin America has been relatively successful and it's becoming a middle class. Uh, there's no open conflicts in the region. And my God, we have so many conflicts in so many other places. 
Latin America, we don't have to really uh, worry about a whole lot. In Brazil. Paulo Sotero, director of the Woodrow Wilson Center's Brazil Institute, believes the slight is a source of real tension in the relationship. Brazil has always had this aspiration to sit at the table. What does it say to Brazil and to Latin America that President Obama isn't ready to endorse that? It says that, uh, well, that the United States is not ready to recognize uh, Brazil's role. Uh, but pays lip service to it from time to time. President Obama needs to recognize that Brazil's rise is real. I think that he does it. None of that political tension was apparent today. Both leaders stressed basic economic issues. Brazil's been a, a extraordinary leader in, in biofuels and uh, obviously is also becoming a world player uh, when it comes to uh, oil and gas development. And uh, the United States uh, is not only a potential large customer to Brazil, but uh, uh, we think that we can uh, cooperate closely uh, on a whole range of uh, energy projects together. Rousseff spoke bluntly about the blowback on developing countries from the monetary policies of the U.S. and Europe. They lead to a depreciation in the value of the currency in developed countries, thus impairing growth outlooks in emerging countries. Brazilian journalist Luciana Coelho said the tone is in keeping with each leader's cool, businesslike personality. I don't think we'll be seeing something like uh, President Bush and President Lula, you know, the two guys who could go for a beer. I would never imagine President Rousseff going for a beer with President Obama. But she's a very focused and uh, hands-on person, and I think people in Brazil likes that. Rousseff will concentrate on addressing what's been a sudden economic slowdown at home, Sotero predicts, with less time for diplomatic adventures abroad like Lula's bid to get in the Iran game. I believe that you will not see Brazil doing the same type of uh, initiative under President Dilma Rousseff. Dilma Rousseff, I think, understands that Brazil's presence and influence in the world depends much more on what happens in Brazil. Rousseff left the White House today with deals on expanding economic, education and energy cooperation, but without support for a Security Council seat. One administration official described the evolving relationship as a slow courtship, saying you can't expect a great leap forward from any single visit. That's a loss, said Castro Neves. These two countries could, have a, could do a lot, much more than they do today. The agenda is not as ambitious as it should be. So a missed opportunity. It's a missed opportunity. Or some people say it's a benign indifference. For these two leaders, preoccupied with more pressing problems, this step-by-step -step diplomacy might be the most that can be expected for now.